Hey y'all, it's Queen C, and welcome to my channel. Thank you for tuning into my very first YouTube video. This is a space where we talk about past and current celebrities and take a little deep dive into their lives and backgrounds to find out who they are, what happened to them, and where they are now. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to help assist that out. And without further ado, let's get into this video. <laughs> Hey everyone, today I decided to cover a topic that I haven't seen much on and that I was curious about. I don't know, I feel like I'm always like, what happened to this person or that group? And oftentimes I don't find a lot of information on it or many people covering it. Anyway, that's why I wanted to do this video and videos like this to kind of give a backstory to anyone curious about what happened to a certain group or a certain person. As you can tell by the title today, we'll be talking about the American R&B group I-15. I-15 was an American R&B singing group formed in the early 2000s consisting of three members, Das, Castro, and Flash, with Castro being the lead singer, Das serving as secondary, and Flash being the rapper of the group. Richard James Castro, or better known as his stage name Castro, and J.R. Castro, was born on August 12, 1989. A native of Las Vegas, Nevada, he grew up with the musical influence of his father, who would play the music of Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, Prince and other artists around the house, thus helping influence his musical taste. There wasn't much out there about his upbringing, but he started getting into music at the age of 13 through his dad, and at that same age is when he met Daz, another member of the group. Now there isn't as much info about Daz or Flash as there is for Castro, so some pieces of their bio or upbringing may be missing. Daz is a native of Chicago where he grew up. However, his family did move to Las Vegas when he was around 13 years old. He started getting into music at the age of 8 through his father. His father also started teaching him how to produce beats and at age 13 is where he met Castro. Both Castro and Daz were introduced to rapper Flash by their manager while in Los, Los Angeles. Now for the third and final member of the group, Flash. Flash was a native of Los Angeles' Compton area. He started getting into music at it at a young age where he began to hone his rap skills. Before becoming a group, Flash was a rapper in the boy band Youth Asylum where he went by the stage name Flashlight. Youth Asylum was a six person group executive produced by Quincy Jones. Once that group disbanded, he ended up becoming a rapper uh, part of I-15 per Daz's request. In summer of 2006 is where I-15 started gaining traction and ended up signing with Interscope Records. The name I-15 derives from the highway that connects Los Angeles and Las Vegas, the cities from which the members of I-15 are based. Daz, who grew up in Chicago, was the link who lived between both towns of LA and Las Vegas due to him moving away from Chicago. While I-15 wasn't as big as Day 26 or 112, they had a few songs up their sleeves such as Don't Get It Twisted, My Bad, Busted, and their most popular single, Lost in Love. They also collaborated on the hit single, Soldier Girl, with Soldier Boy as well. Although I-15 formed in the early 2000s, they didn't begin to make traction until the summer of 2006 when they were signed to Interscope Records under Polo de Don's Zone 4 label. While signed up Interscope Records, they went on to create several songs, one being a hit single. They also created an album which never got released, thus catapulting their downfall. They were signed to Interscope Records up until 2008. As stated before, I-15 was set to release their first studio album in 2008. The album's first single, Lost in Love, became a minor hit on the R&B charts in the early 2000s. A second single, Tutti Frutti, was released before the album's cancellation. I-15's time in the spotlight was short-lived and they ended up breaking up around 2008 for unspecified reasons. Some sources said it was due to the failure to release the debut album, but I couldn't find much on why they broke up. Once I-15 ended things with Interscope, they began moving in different directions, whether it was musically, professionally, or personally. It's a shame that they didn't last long. Each member had their own originality, and not to mention great voices. I wish they got pushed more from their label, because when you listen to their songs, they're a bop, and they definitely have that 2000s feel to them, like those popular songs back in the day. Unfortunately, his mother passed away in 2007 after years of struggling with a serious illness. I couldn't find much info on what illness that was, though. 
A few years after that, Castro went on to work on his single, Get Home, which was released on July 31st, 2015, as the first single from his second EP, Spectations, Volume 1. The track was produced by DJ Mustard and features guest appearances from Kidding and Quavo. Get Home did not enter the Billboard R&B singles, but peaked at number one on the bubbling under R&B chart. Castro went on to also feature Timbaland, Pusha T, YG, and Terrence Martin on tracks before debuting his second EP in 2017, which contained eight songs. Castro came out with another EP titled Songs You Were Made To, which contained five songs and was released in August of 2016 under the PMG label. In 2020, he released a single called The Morning After. As of today, Castro has an active Instagram account with his most recent post being on February 9th, when he previewed what I believe to be some of his music. He also went on to a podcast recently on YouTube, which I will link in the description below. Castro has three daughters and he recently had a son in September of 2021. After the disbandment of the group, Das went on to make a few songs here and there including his most popular ones, Road Trip in 2012 and I Can But I Can't in 2014. He also dropped a few other tracks within those years such as Candy, Watch It Girl, Shoulda Said Something, The Price, Good For You, and Who You With. Listen, I couldn't find much more on this man, okay? I even had to go to page two of Google. Do you know how desperate you have to be to scroll through all the options on page one and still go to page two? <sighs> anyway, that's all I could really find out regarding the DAS. As for Flash, I hope he's doing well, but he must be non-existent because I couldn't find that damn piece of information about this man. If anyone knows his whereabouts or what he's doing, please, please hit me up and let me know because I cannot find him. Sorry to this man. Both Castro and Daz have amazing voices. I think had they honed in in their individual careers more, that they would have had more traction than what they initially received after 2008. I'm glad Castro may be coming out with new music because in that recent clip, that song sounded like it was going to be a bop. And the way the internet works now, it's possible he can make a comeback, but only time can tell. One thing I found rather interesting and humorous is that 10 years ago, I posted a comment on the i15 video talking about what happened to them. And look, 10 years later, here I am doing a where are they now video. The way this world works is definitely strange, but I just thought that I'd point that out. Listen, don't make fun of how I wrote that, okay? That was 10 years ago. Anyway, I wanted to thank you all for tuning in to my very first YouTube video. I hope that you enjoyed the topic that I covered. Please let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and opinions as well as other topics that you think I should cover. I made a list, but I'm definitely open to new ideas. Thank you again, and please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I'll see y'all in the next little video. Bye!